Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. Uh, I'm here with my partner, John Coleman, and another conversation with our regular contributor, Michelle Fabrega, on relationships. Michelle, uh, love and relationship coach. I, I love your title. And I'm willing to bet that because I know human nature just enough, I know I know why I do this, people come back uh, with the same issue. They, they just keep trying. Somehow we we as people don't always get it the first time, do we? We, we keep hitting a brick wall and we keep coming back with the same issue problem sort of like sort of like groundhog day (laughs) yeah 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 am i correct do you get that a lot yeah well a lot of people come to me about something that is the same challenge that happens either in a couple they're having the same kinds of fights the same kinds of uh conflicts over and over again or they're single and they're dating and they end up kind of dating and meeting the same type of person and the relationship doesn't work out. So there's these patterns that we get into that need some attention because if we're not if we're not aware of them, we just kind of repeat them. We kind of repeat the things that we learned sometimes, you know, very young, the ways of being and ways of interacting with each other. So like with a couple, for example, if they're often getting into a fight of some sort, I really invite them to create like a pause agreement, which helps them like if they're triggered and upset. That's not the time, you know, we're not really fully resourced when we're upset. We're more, you know, in our reactive lizard brain and we're not able to be very effective in our communication. So sometimes it's good to take a pause and then come back to the issue and talk about, you know, our needs or our feelings about it and just be curious with each other just to listen. Maybe sometimes it's just time just to listen and, and not necessarily solve it in that moment, but to just... Um, learn more about each other what's going on i I love the phrase lizard brain my wife is convinced (laughs) that i have only a lizard brain believe me and and that's (laughs) you know that's an upgrade that's an upgrade from uh... (laughs) it is Um, michelle you mentioned patterns and uh, it's not easy to see those patterns right you know uh, you can it's so much easier i'm great at this i can see your problem I know how to fix that, <laughs> but I can't see my problem. Well, because you, know, you don't have the problem, John. Well, thank you, Art. I appreciate that. Um, but you know what I mean? It, it's hard to see those patterns. I, I assume that's what a coach is for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes it's like I'm a person is frustrated with their dating life, and maybe they, you know, get ghosted a lot, and the person just they're dating for a while, and it doesn't go anywhere. Or, you know, they're in a relationship and that person ends up being really controlling and they can't, it doesn't work for them. And then they, and then they start again, you know, it's sort of like you said, Groundhog Day or something. And it's, it's helpful to have someone to talk it through and to look more deep, like what is going on that leads them to this situation and to help them, wow, I guess I'm not really asking for what I want here. You know, maybe you're in a relationship and the person isn't meeting your needs. Well, are you sharing, you know, the things that are important to you and maybe you're, you know, we can't read each other's minds, but sometimes we imagine that if we've been with somebody a really long time, they should just know, right? You know, yeah. it's kind of interesting. Um, uh, throughout my my life, uh, and yes, John, sometimes it is about me. Um, uh, I oftentimes was asked to help people if they were negotiating a, a promotion or a new salary or a new job. Uh, for advice. And I became fairly well known and helped a lot of people do that. Yet when I had to negotiate, especially some uh, of my uh, uh, bigger contracts when I was going to become the president of a U.S. company uh, for an overseas company, uh, I found out that I just, because I was a principal, I wasn't just an observer. Uh, So what I did was I called in my brother-in-law, who was uh, also an executive, and had him do the negotiation, and he became known as my bother-in-law, because he would negotiate with the other people. I knew exactly what I wanted, but uh, he was able to remove himself emotionally from it. And so as a coach, um, that's, I can clearly see 
value of, of your role of doing that because the two people may be very, very good at representing their own positions or uh, with other people. Uh, but when it comes to that relationship with a loved one, uh, they just, they can't be objective. Absolutely true. Yeah. And they also can be re reactive with each other sometimes like, uh, you know, getting easily irritated by some pattern of, you know, there's some blocks in relationships like, you know, stonewalling and criticism, contempt and defensiveness. You know, John, Dr. John Gottman talks about that in the four, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. But these are patterns that some of the patterns that people have that they've already proven. These are relationship killers. I mean, these will, you cannot really sustain a relationship if some of these are going on. And as long as we don't, can't, it's hard, like, okay, I can know that intellectually, but how in the moment do I stop doing that? And that's where we, sometimes you need some more work to discover, wow, what's this automatic thing that's happening? And uh, one of the things I like to help people with is around like mindfulness, really about helping to be more sort of a little more stable in your own emotions. I know that really helped me to, I have a meditation practice now, but really about helping me not be so reactive. How can I respond? How can I just listen, stay curious? We don't have to respond right away. We can just listen. And it, it, it's easier said than done, of course, but it's helpful to have encouragement with that. Yeah, and I, I assume when you're trying to learn something new like that, to change your modus operandi, you really have to take it step by step, and, and it takes a lot of practice. Yes, and it also takes a lot of self-compassion, and that's what I also try to invite people to have is patience with themselves, self-compassion, compassion for their partner. If their partner's trying to change something, you know, it's difficult. We are creatures of habit, right? We've been doing this certain thing for a while and to learn something different, you got to celebrate the little steps of that and, and even ask for help from your partner. Like, Oh, please let me know when I do that thing. Yeah. I don't want to be doing that thing anymore. And then that person can be an ally for us too. Yeah. That's, that's great. A great advice. And I'm going to start looking for patterns uh, in my relationship with art. Yeah. <laughs> now, the way I handle John, I mean, the way our relationship is so rich is that I every so often, even though it's totally insincere, uh, say, uh, a wise one. Or, <laughs> um, and humor him. And then, then I, since I control the technical sides of it, I go off and do whatever I want. And, yeah. and, and, and he's glad really well. that he doesn't have to pay for it. So he humors me and says, what a great job you did. So... <laughs> I love that. Well, Michelle. Even, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, finish your thought. Well, I was just going to say about humor, like humor and playfulness. Like that's so important to bring into a relationship. And sometimes, sometimes it can be a way to avoid a situation. So you got to be careful sometimes that you're not using it to like, oh, I'm good. Hey, you, you know, it's all good. And it's like, well, when it's not, but, but that playfulness and, uh, you know, that little kid that's still in all of us, it, that's really important to, to hold yeah. on to. So all of these things are so uh, so individualistic, aren't they? I mean, we're talking in generalities, but when you're sitting with a client, um, it really has got to be difficult to pick apart the individual um, patterns and apply the correct techniques for them to help change their lives. And maybe release their anger, because I'm sure a lot of people who come to you are just, they're, they're, they're at the edge of the cliff. With a relationship, right. uh, and uh, they need to be walked back and feel good about themselves, and hopefully, good about the find there is good in the other person, and and maybe we don't belong together, but we should still respect that they have an opinion. Right. Yeah. I mean, I love that you said that about anger, and it's um, and feelings in general. Like feelings are sort of the onboard instrumentation that we have as humans to help us navigate our lives. And it doesn't mean they just can be sprayed all over the place because that can create, as you can imagine, a lot of, you know, wreckage really, but to really, oh, I'm upset about this. So this something, there's a boundary that's been crossed here in some way, some way I'm not advocating for myself or some way that I did and my partner crossed that. So it's good to like, listen to those things and feel, you know, notice and feel those things. A lot of us didn't get much encouragement to feel our feelings. And frankly, I don't like to stereotype because it is very individual, but a lot of times for men, they weren't, emotions weren't accepted or allowed. So how are they supposed to know what, what's going on, what they want? It's, um, they're kind of flying blind. And so, and then 
yeah, so that's that's one of the things to help people with, wow, what are you feeling? What are you noticing? Because our bodies are a resource for us for that. Good, good information today. I really appreciate it. And you know what was really great? The extra bonus is we don't get charged for the session, John. <laughs> <laughs> I feel whenever I'm with Michelle, we're sort of like in couples therapy. That's and, right. and we're getting it gratis uh, because yeah. we control yeah. the tape. <laughs> do you do business? Do you do business relationships? Uh, I don't really. I mean, sometimes those issues come up around work, but mostly, I, yeah. I mean, love and connection, intimacy, sexuality. Those are kind of my jam, I guess. <laughs> I have a question yeah. for you, Michelle. Well, do you? Um, uh, I, I assume a lot. Uh, most often, you have uh, somebody come to your uh, an office where you meet with them in person someplace. Is that the way it works, or do you do uh, a, a lot of coaching via? Uh, uh, telephone and or maybe in today's age, uh, Zoom. How does that work? And how how would people reach you? Yeah. So I do coaching over the phone, over Zoom, and also in person. I'm in Foster City, California. Obviously, that's not happening now with um, the shelter in place. But yeah, I I, yeah, love to chat with people and look into what's going on for them and see whether coaching might be a fit for them. And how can they best reach you? Uh, do you have a website or? Yeah, I have a website and uh, there's a phone number there. There's an email there. And, and the website please... is? W... Oh. Uh, yeah, www.michellefabrega.com. Great. Good. Sounds easy enough. And we can find you on LinkedIn too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. And we'll look forward to seeing you again next time on Celebrating Act Two. Thanks. I'm looking forward to it too. See ya. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.